for James, a convert to the Church of Rome, to become, as king, head of the Church of England, was indeed a miracle. Or perhaps it was a horrible misunderstanding. That was certainly the opinion of a group of English exiles in the Dutch Republic, known as Whigs and staunch believers in Protestantism and limited monarchy. They'd been forced to flee when they'd lost the battle to keep James from the throne. They were in despair at the complacency of those in the Church of England and in Parliament, known as Tories, who now supported a Catholic king. Only an armed invasion, the Whig exiles thought, could save England from Catholic absolutism. Its natural leader was one of their own number, James, Duke of Monmouth, who, because he was Charles II's bastard son, had some sort of claim to the throne. His fellow exiles managed to persuade him to lead an expedition and on the 24th of May, he set sail to England at the head of a pathetically small force of three ships and only 83 men. The little band made for the coast of Dorset, an area where the good old cause of English republicanism had been particularly strong. James, for his part, was worried about insurrection elsewhere and was able to spare only two or three thousand troops against Monmouth. But at least they were professional soldiers and that proved decisive. The showdown came here at Sedgemoor. Boxed in by the Royal Army, Monmouth decided that his only chance was to launch a surprise nighttime attack. The tactic made sense but his scratch troops were incapable of carrying it out. Instead, as dawn broke, they were routed by the King's troops. 500 of them were killed and 1,500 captured. By then, Monmouth himself had fled. Two days later, he was discovered hiding in a ditch, made prisoner and taken to London. There was no need for a trial. Monmouth had already been condemned as a traitor by Act of Parliament. He was brought to Tower Hill for execution on the 15th of July. James had easily overcome what had only ever been a revolt of enthusiastic amateurs. 